Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna show you how to boost your FPS in Dying Light the Beast. We're gonna start by optimizing Windows, and after that, we're gonna take a look on your NVIDIA and Radiant parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're gonna start by writing settings, and we're gonna go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA, make sure that you have the latest version of your uh, NVIDIA app slash your drivers in uh, because you have Dying Light the Beast over there, dedicated drivers. Now let's go to the graphic. Normally you should see your game over here. Uh, before I was telling you guys to change your DLSS parameter directly in your game, but now you can do it in the global setting. If you don't see this view, go to your setting, go to about and make sure that you opt in for the beta. So let's go back to the uh, global setting. So what we want to do in the DLSS override, click on it. Make sure that you're using the latest version. So you're going to use the latest version of frame generation, re-reconstruction and super resolution, the DLSS 4. So you don't have to wait on your developer to update their game. So you will have always the latest version from NVIDIA. Smooth motion, I recommend to go with off. Too much input lag with it and any way you can use frame gen if you have a 4000 series or more recent. Low latency mode, I recommend to go with on. I lock my FPS at 237 because I'm using G-Sync on a 240 Hertz monitor. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, it's using 5 gig. I recommend to go with 10 or 100 if you have the disk space. Uh, if you install a lot of games, if you have just two or three games on your PC, that's not an issue. But if you have a lot of different games, uh, sometimes you can have an issue with your space. So you, you will need to reconstruct your shader. You can cause cut stuttering, corruption in your shader. So this thing can be good. Also for uh, the global setting in system, if you want to use your G-Sync, click on it, go with on. I like to use it full screen and window when I'm playing borderless game. Make sure that, that you apply it on your monitor that is compatible with G-Sync. In display properties, make sure that you're using native resolution and make sure that you're using the IS refresh rate available to your monitor. And in the color section, if you have an HDR monitor compatible with 10 bit colors, make sure that you're selecting 10 dynamic range full over there. And for your digital vibrance, I like to put at 55. By default, it's 50. Games are less gray. You're getting more saturation in your color. In the performance tab, I like to use the power maximum at 133%. So it's going to send more wattage to my video card. I'm getting a longer booster clock. So 5 to 7% optimization in my FPS. So boost my FPS. 
But uh, NVIDIA is using an algorithm. So if you don't have good thermals, you don't have the room on your GPU, it will not do anything. So just stay at 100. But if you have a good GPU with the decent thermals, definitely try this out. Now let's go to the Radiant settings. So now for Radiant card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor, go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now, in the video section, make sure that you're playing full screen in this game. Make sure that you are in native for your resolution. I don't use vertical sync. It adds input lag in the game. And anyway, I'm using G-Sync. So if you're using G-Sync or FreeSync, you don't need that. If you don't like your tiering, uh, those horizontal lines, um, you can definitely use V-Sync. But it will add a little bit of input lag. Dynamic resolution scaling, I recommend to go with off. I don't FPS limit my in my game. I'm using, uh, anyway, NVIDIA app. Here, this is the upscaling section. So for sure, if you have an RTX card, definitely go with DLSS. I recommend to go with quality. You can expect 10% boost. Um, and also, you can use balance if you want uh, on 1440p and 4K resolution. Um, you can expect 15% boost. I'm not a fan of balance on 1080p. The game looks a little bit blurry. So my recommendation is go with quality uh, for 1080p, definitely. 
Uh, now, you have also FSR available 3.1.5 if you don't have the latest version of a Radiant video card. Um, definitely use quality, can expect 10% boost. After that, the game looks a little bit blurry. If you have the latest version of FSR, FSR 4, definitely use that. It's a lot better than 3.1. But my recommendation is use XESS. They have the latest version of it and it's better than 3.1. So the thing is here, if you just have 3.1 available for FSR, I recommend to go with XESS at quality. You will have less FPS. You will probably be at 8% boost, uh, but your image quality will be a lot better. But if you have the latest version of Radian with FSR 4, go with FSR 4. It's better than XESS. For the rest of the person, if you have a, a, the LSS, just use the LSS. Sharpness, I'm using a 50. If you feel that your game is a little bit blurry, go higher. If it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. Latency reduction, use Reflex if it's available to you. Frame Gen, I'm not using it. You can expect 40% boost in your FPS. I feel too much the, the input lag in the game, so that's why I'm not using it. So do some testing. If it's working for you, go for it. Uh, if not, uh, just deactivate it. Field of view, it's 57 by default. If you go higher, you can expect drop in your FPS. So do some testing for this one. And in the advanced section, I recommend to go with off with everything over there. You will have better visibility and also a nice 5% boost in your FPS. Motion blur intensity, I recommend to go with zero. For the majority of the people, D uh, DirectX 12 will be better than 11 for your FPS, except if you really have a really old computer, definitely test DirectX uh, 11. Honestly, on all my PC with my 2070, my, uh, my Radeon card, everything was better with uh, DirectX 12. Asynchronous uh, compute go with on for this one. Texture quality, you just have two options. That's a bit weird. Uh, um, if you have 6 gig and more of VRAM, go with high. Less than that, go with medium. LOD quality, not a huge impact. Again, you have two options. Go with high, but draw distance mul multiplier. Make sure that you are at 100. This will give you a lot of FPS versus the 140 by default. Particle quality, shadow quality, those one I recommend to go with medium. Uh, you just have two options, as you can see. You can expect a nice 6% boost over there. Screen space shadow, go with off. Ambient occlusion, this one is huge. If you're comparing um, high to low, you can expect an 8% boost. I don't recommend to go with none. The game looks very flat without it, so that's why I'm going with low. Same thing with global illumination, a nice 4% boost over here. Reflection quality, fog quality, go with low. And the last one... Process qual uh, post process quality also with low uh, post processing in this game add a lot of blurriness so you just have two options so my recommendation it will go with low your image will be a lot more sharper and you will gain a little bit of your FPS. So this is pretty much it guys for Dying Light the Beast. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.